But you can imagine the last three chief rabbis of Iraq were, were, of, uh, were, were of, of Israel, the three Sephardic chief rabbis were Iraqi exactly. Jews. Exactly. And uh, we had the very high... Ben is like the authority of, 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 of Middle course. Eastern Jewry, of and course. he was from he Iraq. Influenced, he influenced all the Sephardim in his writings. Every Sephardic community follows his, uh, his uh, uh, halachic... Uh, uh, rulings, yeah. rulings in terms of uh, prayers, in terms of customs and everything else. That's why... Even the Persians. <laughs> even the Persians, even the, the, the Turkish. If, when you go now in any... any you can go to, to, two, to two Ashkenazi congregations, each one will pray differently. Each one has different customs. You go to ten Sephardic communities from all over the world, they all have the same. The same prayer book, the same Nosach, the same everything. I have to tell so you, I find that sometimes I find it a little hard to distinguish. You have to be a little more familiar with the fine print. The Rebbe, the Rebbe used to love the, the Nosach, the Ashkenazi, the Sephardic Nosach. Nosach. Yeah, yeah. He was very, very close. Yeah. Yeah. And you should know, you were his ophthalmologist. Yeah, I was his eye doctor. Yeah. You were his eye doctor for yeah. many years. Yeah. Um, so to put things in perspective, it's, it, I'm just amazed how everyone is talking about the Palestinian rights, the Palestinian uh, rights for their property, which nobody even knows where they started and how they started. Here there are Jews who have been in Iraq for 2,400 years, but Iraq is not their country. They come to Israel. Israel is not their country either, because well, it is Israel. everything. No, but everybody is expecting that the Jews should give back. Hebron is not ours. Jerusalem, what is ours? Do we have anything? Are we somebody? Well, this Tel Aviv is the, didn't exist. This is the whole thing. I would like. Ago. I would like just to mention to you the caliber of what we're talking about. Uh, the the Jews lost in just in cash in Baghdad, in Iraq, over $1 billion it was confiscated in the banks. That's money, cash, in, 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 in sterling pounds, excuse me. The, the same thing in Egypt, the same thing in Morocco, in every, in every country. In addition to that, property, we had about 100,000 square kilometers of property that, we, that, that, the, Jew, that the, Jews, the Jews had, deeded property in the Arab countries in Iraq, and Morocco, and all these countries. Now, do you know how, what is the size of Israel? Israel, with the Golan, with the West Bank, it's so-called Hebron, uh, Judea and Samaria, and Gaza, Israel is 30,000 square kilometers. Israel without Judea, Samaria, and Gaza is only 20,000 square kilometers. We had property in the Middle East over 100,000 square kilometers. And I sp told that That's to President five Israels. When they talk, by, by when they talk about peace with the Arabs, they should point out to them they are responsible for the welfare of over half of Israel's population. Half of Israel's population are Jews from Arab countries, they are refugees from Arab countries. And the Arabs have to have, bear responsibility for these Jews. They want Israel to bear responsibilities for the Palestinian Arab refugees. But the Arabs have to bear responsibility first because it, whereas the Palestinian Arab refugees left voluntarily the area that was at war. Well, because the Mufti wanted, said that they will throw all right. the Jews in the they sea. Told them, they told them, the Arab leaders told them, leave their ho your homes and you come back with the victorious armies. Who doesn't believe it when the Egyptian army was eight, kilometers south of, uh, eight miles south of Tel Aviv and the Jordanian army was uh, 20 miles from Tel Aviv and the... And, uh, and the Syrians were in the north, uh, near Rosh Pina. Who doesn't believe uh, these leaders that they are going to, to squeeze Israel and then take their homes and give it to the, to the Arabs? Naturally, it makes sense. So the question here is, the Jews of Arab countries had nothing to do with the creation of the State of Israel. They were living at peace in their homes, and yet they were forced to leave their homes, and all their property was confiscated. They came to Israel as penniless refugees, Drowning Israel practically with with a poverty stricken one million Jews at that time, and now they come and say we want the rights of the Palestinians, and they have you know most people don't know that the peace process has beside beside the negotiate political negotiation there is a negotiation on the refugees, that, and this was in the Madrid formula that they had exactly the issue. they had to have one issue on the refugees, and they did not say just refugees they said uh, Arab refugees they said refugees. And until today, 
Until the present time, the Israeli government did not bring the issue of the Jewish refugees of Arab countries before that panel. Neither so the government. Arab, not the right, not the left. Nobody. No, nobody. Well, well I, have to, story. I, have say, I have to say you, that, you Shamir, have, have that, that Shamir, Prime Minister Shamir, when he was then... In from, Madrid. When he was in Madrid, he brought it up. We're he running out of up, time. I just want to say, that. this is documented in your book. Yes. Flight from Babylon by McGraw-Hill. Yes. You have that. Okay, if anybody wants to follow up with Dr. Heskel Haddad, you can follow up with him at 212-427-1246, or you can fax him 212-360-7009. He is the president of the World Organization of Jews from Arab Countries. Dr. Haddad, we have less than half a minute. You were the Rebbe's doctor. Could you en encapsulate your impression of the Rebbe? Oh, in half a minute, you can't encapsulate the rabbi in half a minute. He was a, he was a, not just, a, he was a phenomenon that, that really exists, really exists. Really. As in a terms doctor. Of, in, terms of knowledge, in terms of knowledge, whatever you discuss with him in medical terminologies, he was very well versed. I mean, he knew lasers, he knew everything. He was, he was remarkable in his, in his mind, in his knowledge. He spoke several languages. I could speak to him in French and in English and in German, and I didn't speak Yiddish very well. In Hebrew, he spoke beautifully. He only didn't know Arabic. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, hope that your experience with Rebbe keeps you going, and you'll be able to share with us some more of your knowledge, both as far as uh, tradition of the Sephardic communities and your own life's experience. There's a lot to talk about. I hope you'll be back one day. Thank you for inviting me. And you have yours. We hope to meet with you finally with Mashiach, but until then, we want to wish you Baruch HaVatzlocha and all the best. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Thank you.